and we're back. What's up, bitches? It's a beautiful Saturday, January the 12th. We've gotten all sorts of shit done today. You're going on a ride with me. Uh, so back in the day, back in the day, uh, I used to skateboard a lot, and I still have a skateboard. So I um. I saw right near my house, like two miles away, there's a skate park, and it's completely for free. I'm pretty sure it's for free. So I got my skateboard, mm, and I'm gonna go out and try it out. You know, reflexes and stuff. I still know how to do everything, just like that breakdancing video that I was doing. Um, and however good I was at skateboarding, uh, just with body memory and everything, you can always you can always get back to where you were, but right off the bat, you're going to notice that there's some differences and whatnot. Uh, but I'm not going to go too crazy. I don't have a helmet. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm just, just going to have some fun. But, um, so, I was thinking about, um, and this is not morbid, okay? I'm not depressed. I got to overemphasize that. I'm a, I'm a happy guy, but... I said before that I think differently, and everybody wants to say that they're different than everybody else, and I get that shit, but unless anybody can relate to this, uh, what I'm about to say, everybody is, is, is different in their own aspect, um, but for me, I can only say I'm different based off of how I see other people and how, and how I, I hear other people think and the decisions that they make and, and how they do that. So first off, like... I think most people, in my opinion, I, I make a lot of videos about getting off your fucking ass and not procrastinating and getting your shit done. And the reason why is because everybody thinks forward. Everybody usually thinks about how much time they have in life. Me, you know that thing that people say where it was like, like they live their whole life and like 50 years later or whatever, um, you know, somebody might get some sort of a horrible something might happen to where like the doctor says you know you got six months to live and all of a sudden they are living their life that like they never lived uh, ever before so not being morbid but talking about death just for a second what i'm getting at is is that you know i'm a christian not pushing anything on anybody but i'm still alive and um i don't think as far as how much time i have I think as far as how much time I don't have, and I don't have a clue how long that is. And because that, you know, with that being mentioned, I live every single day, not in the complete dire circumstance of, of being panicked, but I do live literally every single day as though it were my last. And again, I'm not saying that in like a depressing way or anything. But I look at about, I used to go to bed around like 10. I get about like five, between five and six hours of rest per night. Um, but I look at 10 o'clock at night, like from when I start my morning, as far as like, not necessarily that's when I would no longer be alive. And I know people are saying, what the fuck is this guy talking about? But what I am saying is, is that as though 10 o'clock, it's like a, kind of like Cinderella, you know? Like when everything changes, because I'm going to bed, and um, I'm not going to get anything really accomplished. Depending on how much, how much creativity and how much uh, I can maybe soak up in some dreams, and I count that as like life too, um, and living and, and where part of your creativity and ideas come from. But what I'm getting at is that um, I look at every single day, you know. Think about where you are right now, whatever problems you have in life. Now think about a thousand years from now. If you're not alive a thousand years from now, and you compare it to the problem that you have right now, it's really not that big of a fucking problem. Usually. All the problems that people find in life, they're usually not actual fucking problems. They're just small things because people have a way of finding problems when they don't exist or amplifying and magnifying and make them bigger. So then all of a sudden, all that shit, all those illusions of problems actually goes away pretty damn quick. I'm already here at the skate park. Told you it was quick. Four and a half minutes away. Um, 
And uh, what if somebody told you you only had one day to live? Well, then all of a sudden you'd be like that guy who had six months. And you would be so much more ambitious. You would be so much more uh, genuine. Your, the wine would taste sweeter. The, the food would taste better. And absolutely every single thing like that. And that is honestly how I live my life. Because I'm not terrified to go to bed by any means. But before I go to bed every single night, it does cross. And I do think about it. Um, not necessarily about not being alive, but about how much more I could have got done. Because the truth is, nobody knows how long they're going to be alive. Look at this beautiful skate park. Um, and I know this is kind of like taking a weird turn, but what I'm trying to say is, if you can take something positive from what I'm saying, and maybe apply it to yourself, that's great. And I'm not trying to have anybody apply to it. I'm just making another one of my videos. Um... Now, I haven't been doing comedy for like the last two weeks, circumstantially, uh, holidays and Christmas and then um, national championships of some sport that I don't give a shit about. But I've been doing absolutely everything is possible because I don't believe in time off. I don't believe in breaks. I don't believe in days off, especially when it comes to your passions in life. Uh, those creativities creative and activities. It's a word I made. Creativities. I said it in another video, but it's true. Um, put the car in park. Uh, so, the last two weeks, I've been on fire, waiting to go on stage, thinking about new stuff, rehearsing, tightening stuff out. I mean, tightening stuff up. Um, saying jokes every single place I can, anywhere between 30 seconds to 5 minutes, depending on who would listen. And I always... I always make the world my stage. And uh, what I mean by that is I always try to get more stage time by saying it off the cuff at random people that aren't really suspecting it. Perfect scenario where you're always going to have somebody's full attention. Or for the most part, and they can still listen to you, is like at a gym as you're checking in. Uh, or as you're leaving, you can get out like a few jokes and stuff like that. And you can, there's so many different angles and ways that you can actually do that. So that's, that's something that I have been... Uh, focusing on solely while I haven't been on stage, but that's something even when I go on stage, I still do not even year round, life round. I've always done that and I'm always, and I'm still doing it. I got so much stuff and I want to talk about and I'm so excited and I'm so motivated. But, uh, the great thing about, the great thing about life and your passions is that of course, ideally, if you can get paid to do what you love, you're not really working. You're just doing what you love, and you're getting paid, and that's the goal for comedy, of course. Um, but I do have other stuff like acting and um, and writing and stuff. By the way, again, shout out to Brian Rosenheim, the guy who's writing my script. Well, I already wrote it. I meant to say editing. Um, out in Los Angeles, heck of a guy, really nice, super funny. Um, but uh, part of part of what, in my opinion, brings together all of your jokes and all of your stories and all of who you are, your soul, at your core is um, always doing those things that make you happy. Now, me personally, because the day job that I do, I'm not passionate about. I'm appreciative of it. I'm thankful for it. But I don't care at all about it. And I'm not saying that in a reckless way. What I'm saying is, my day starts before I go to work. It pauses, kind of, basically, while I'm at work. And it doesn't continue until after work. Because I'm not doing something that I'm passionate about. I don't ever start my morning looking looking forward to going to work. I don't. You know, somebody told me the other day they like uh, uh, their job because they like to, uh, they get to stay home a lot. And they get to uh, just wear sweatpants and have TV on while they're doing uh, IT work. And I said, so do you like IT work? Or do you like, I said, let me ask you a question. If you had to like, uh, uh, if you could wear sweatpants, you know, or have a TV on at your house, uh, at, at, at your actual building, would you like it? And he said, no, no. I said, it sounds like you just like staying home then and wearing sweatpants and not working. And that brings you a little bit closer to more what you like. You see, in my opinion, people cross the streams too much as far as what they like. You see somebody skateboarding right back there? I know I am, just glancing at it. Um, try to go like this. 
But um, I think people use, I'm really big into the semantics of things. I won't give an inch on, on any word because in my opinion, subconsciously, words like friends, they have reverence to me, you know? If you met me one time and you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's, like, a, that's like my best friend word you know I've had people say that to me and it, it's awkward because I got to correct them I don't want people thinking I'm, I'm their best friend my best friends know who I am and I know who they are and there are different levels of friendships and stuff like the great people that I'm meeting in the um, uh, the comedy scene here in the Dallas Fort Worth area um, great great you know some of them are, are really awesome some of them I don't have I don't like or dislike I, I'm just neutral towards and um, those relationship with those neutral people you know, neutral is a really underrated word because somebody could say, what do you like about your job? I don't like anything about it. What do you love about your job? I don't love anything about it. And I know I'm going off on a rant, but what I'm getting at is I think that I think that there's like a whole lot of illusions as far as what you want to do, what you do. And when you use those same words like like and love and uh, towards things that you're that you're not really into, I think it devalues the things that you are into, right? So today, I told myself, you know, um, I could have I could have traveled out further and maybe gone like a comedy spot further, further away. But I'm still I want to get on stage and have the next five minutes of what I'm saying be really really tight. And um, comedy, you 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 only get, you only know it works when you're on stage, which is why I. I, I increment it everywhere I go. So by the time I said it on stage, it's never the first time I've said it. I've already worked it out to a degree. Um, and if I haven't said it all together, the real big trick at that point is just the segue. But um, part of the thing that if, if I only had one day to live, what I would do today is exactly what I've done. You know, I saw my skateboard lying in a corner. There was no dust on it or anything, you know. There's not really dust in my house. I mean, I guess periodically, but whatever. And um, I got my bow. I got my compound bow. Oh, it's not even back here. It's in the trunk. Um, and, uh, oh, is it? Oh, no, it is here. Yeah, see? Um, I almost freaked the fuck out. I'm like, man, I leave it outside? Better not. It's a thousand plus dollars. Uh, I would do absolutely everything that I've been doing today. And, um, I think it's really important to always live every single day as though you don't have a tomorrow, but not in a morbid aspect. So for example, when I tell my wife I love her, I really mean it. You know, I think I think because life is such a, a frail thing, the people don't, you know, I tell my wife how much I love her and good night at the end of the night. Uh, I really mean that. And I say it like it's the last time I'm ever going to say it. And that's not like a weepy thing to say. You understand? But I do say it genuinely. Now, I don't have kids. But if you can, if you can relate the amount of love that you have, if you have kids, every single time, it's a weird thing because people love their kids more than they love their wives. They do, truthfully. I mean... Joe Rogan has this really funny joke where he was uh, talking about there were two bananas left and he um, there is a perfectly good bright yellow organic banana and right beside it there's like a slightly older uh, regular banana because his wife doesn't like the organic ones or whatever and it's like a little mushy and brown it's almost it's almost completely gone so there are two bananas and he picked up one and he picked up the good banana his daughter said to him hey, could I have a banana? And he looked at what was left and he gave her the good banana. And he, Joe Rogan, was uh, saying that it's a funny thing about how much you love your kids compared to how much you love everybody else, including your wife. Because if my wife asked me for a banana, that bitch would get that old banana. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just, part of what's great about comedy and the truth and the art and all that stuff is that you're 100% vulnerable, you're 100% alive, you're 100% on fire, you're 100% doing great. And um, the, the ability to, to bring that life and joy and everything into other people's lives, if they're having a shitty day or a good day, laughter is always a good thing. So, you know, the world definitely needs more of it.
but uh yeah i just i'm really thankful and i'm really happy and i'm really motivated and uh on my way to the skate park i knew that i wanted to uh to do a quick video give a shout out to everybody and um maybe think what i i said maybe don't but you can't change the fact that if you did have six months to live again getting away from the morbid part how much better everything if now if you're constantly thinking about the end that's a bad thing right but it's a simple concept and sometimes in this video these videos if it's something funny i'll talk about it or whatever or if it's just like my inner thoughts i kind of bring it out um not just for me and, and that's what these videos are for but so maybe somebody can understand me better and how i think and the way i feel um i'm telling you what being my friend is a challenge i interrupt people all the time uh uh, I talk too much. I ramble on. I have tons of defects. But I start every single day, every single day, as though it is going to be the worst day ever with, with, okay? Uh, everything that could possibly be going wrong, go wrong. And when my work ethic comes in, I work to, to overcome all of that. And by the end of the day, like I basically, in my opinion, I only feel like I'm progressing if I'm below zero. Because the truth is, is that everybody starts a data neutral. But imagine if you wanted to make progress and you were like, let's just say there were just simple numbers. You were like negative 10. There were, you're, you're behind 10 things that you didn't do yesterday. Well, if you do 20, in all reality, you're gonna get 20 done, but you're, you're gonna have to shoot through that ground zero. You kind of understand what I'm saying? probably lost you on that one it makes sense to me but i i the outcome of everything that i have is bad um and i'm not a pessimist by any means i just believe my ex i set my expectations extremely extremely low for everything that uh, that i think is how it's going to work out but i work so hard to make sure that i will go through that low so that I can reach the expectations that I believe I can achieve and I will achieve. You know, if you if you intend on everything going bad and you work hard to prevent that from happening in reality, your mindset is pretty much saying that nothing is going to work out, but your work ethic and your body and everything else is pushing it to make sure that that doesn't happen. So it's like I'm constantly, constantly working against myself between my mindset thinking that nothing will work out. Um, and I think that's, in all honesty, it's probably a lot more healthy to do that. Because if you think that everything is going to work out, I believe everything will work out. That's one side of it. But my mindset says, unless I bust my ass, it's not going to happen. Not that if, if I bust my ass, it's not going to happen. But unless I do. So my mindset is already set in a negative. And when I start my morning, I have to break through that mindset to prove to myself every single day that I did get more accomplished and I did get a lot of stuff done. And uh, with that being mentioned, I hope if there are some different things that you could maybe take from this, that's great. If not, that's cool. I get it. Um, but yeah, I'm so happy. I'm so excited and I'm so motivated and I can't wait to go on stage. 2019 is literally going to be the best year ever. I have so much things going on in the background. So much noise that I'm going to make. And um, uh, I'm going to have the world hear me back. So, hope you liked my video. If you did, hope you weren't depressed. Thinking about what is this fucker talking about. Um, but yeah. Um, I'm going to skateboard because that's exactly what I want to do today. I hope everybody has an awesome rest of your day. And um, yeah, just keep on keep on pushing. So hope you like my video. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, if this is on YouTube, which it always is as well, uh, you can hit like to that button over there. And if not, um, I wish there was a dislike, but they don't really have that on Facebook. I'm pretty sure they don't, they should. Um, 
but yeah feel free to leave a comment and everything uh and i think that's it i'll take my skateboard and go try it out might even put some videos up on instagram instagram benja well done b-e-n-j-a well done w-e-l-l-d-o-n-e -L -L -E. just a different way of saying my name because everyone always messes messes the way it's uh pronounced up and um youtube benja well done comedy have a great day i'm gonna go skateboard now i'm out peace Hello!